I think I should start off by, by telling you something which is absolutely evident to all of you, which is how critical and important this moment in time is. I've, I've been involved on and off in, in climate change stuff, I think, for about the past 14 years. And I have never seen such a strong scientific base for decision making, such a broad understanding of the challenge that we're confronted with, and such a resounding political willingness to come to grips with this. When I first got into this business 14 years ago, um, you know, there would be two or three thousand people attending a COP. Um, no heads of state or government, handful of ministers. We have at the moment 43,000 people registered for this climate change conference. They're not all going to get in <laughs> because of fire safety regulations amongst, amongst other things, but, but they're there and they want to be there. I, I spent the afternoon um, receiving a, a petition from, from Desmond Tutu which had been signed by half a million people. We have, I think, Minister, 120 heads of state and government uh, converging on Copenhagen next week. The heads of state and government generally don't come to celebrate failure. They come to celebrate success and to be part of success. Um, and, and that, I think, is also unique, unique in a number of ways, U unique, for example, in the sense that in the midst of an economic crisis, a financial crisis, knowing that finance is a central part of the solution to Copenhagen, still all of these world leaders in, uh, are coming here to celebrate success. And I think that we should recognize the importance of that moment. I think we should capitalize on the importance of that moment because I quite honestly personally believe that it's not going to come again. I believe that if we fail, if, if you fail to deliver a resounding answer to the, to the challenge of climate change by next Friday, that the spotlight will move elsewhere, that pol political attention will move elsewhere and that I can commiserate even more with Pascal Ami than I already do. We really need to see an advance on this and we really need to see an advance on this in Copenhagen in a way that addresses the interests of the many different governments and constituencies that are involved in this process. Almost before the ink was dry on the Climate Change Convention, we shifted our attention at the first conference of parties towards the Kyoto Protocol, towards a next generation of commitments on the part of industrialized countries. And in the course of the shift of that focus, in the course of the shift of that focus to targets for industrialized countries, I think that we forgot a little bit about the much broader agenda that the Framework Convention on Climate Change represents.